Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. I wanted to talk in this video about how Ethereum Classic got pwned, right? Like um, they they had a 51% attack executed against it. Uh, uh, at one exchange, Gate.io lost like 40,000 um, you know, Ethereum Classic tokens as a result. They're making their customers whole. I think they, they've they made enough money off of trading that that's uh, entirely feasible because uh, Ethereum Classic at this point is about $5 a coin. So that's like $200,000, something like that. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, I wanted to talk in this video about how that happened, why that happened, how it's actually kind of possible. Um, so the reason why Ethereum Classic... Um, went to this is because they use the same mining algorithm as ethereum so that means that there's a lot of other equipment uh that's being that that's mining on the ethereum network that was repurposed for ethereum classic and basically executed a 51 percent attack um and this can happen a lot if you if you have um, some sort of hard fork and you don't change your proof of work, uh, which is more or less what a lot of Bitcoin forks did. So, uh, you know, th this was one of the things that a lot of people were looking at back when Bitcoin Cash was forking off of Bitcoin. It was okay. What well, what's going to happen? Like, um, are are they going to get attacked? Um, and you know, especially around user activated software, they didn't know what the split would be. It, it was entirely possible with something like Segwit2x that the majority would be on um, on one side, the hard fork side and the other. And, you know, there were certain attack scenarios and things like that. And this is, this is exactly what my game theory articles from back then were uh, talking about is when you have the same proof of work algorithm, there, I mean, it, it really sucks to be in the minority because you are almost always vulnerable to attack. And the re only real way ways to um to like mitigate that are um you know like centralized solutions like checkpointing which is what bitcoin abc did during their hash war with bitcoin sv um or you know like uh, hard forking or uh, something like that uh, almost every or changing your proof of work obviously all of those are centralizing solutions right because you, you're you're basically forcing everybody to upgrade to a different proof of work or forcing everybody to recognize certain blocks as valid uh, no matter what um you know it, it's central dictation of what uh what everything should be and that that's um yeah, I mean, if you're going to go down that route, at, at that point, you should just be a centralized service with a database instead of a complicated thing like a blockchain. So um, in that sense, you know, like a, a lot of these uh, hard fork coins really don't make any sense. And if you're not sort of the dominant player using uh, the, the dominant coin using that particular proof of work algorithm, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure for attacks like this. Um, now, it, it turns out that um, attacks aren't nearly as detrimental to price of uh, these coins as as was previously thought. Um, I, I thought, for example, that if, if a coin got attacked, that it would drop to zero almost immediately. Uh, but that didn't happen with Verge when it was 51% attacked, and that certainly didn't happen with Ethereum Classic in this uh, recent instance. It's, it just seems like sort of the cost of doing business, and it's not really that big of a surprise because people are kind of used to getting taken advantage of by banks and so on. So in a sense, it's a sad commentary on um, on us. <laughs> uh, in a sense, as long as it didn't happen to me, I'm okay with it kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of sad. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully more people recognize uh, the, um, just sort of the vulnerabilities that are involved, but uh, in a sense, these are kind of small potatoes, right? The much bigger, um, bigger threats are the actual centralization itself. Once you centralize, then you have the possibility of inflation and no sovereign ever has, uh, been, able to resist the temptation to print more money for themselves. Um, and so, I mean, I, I think that's sort of the inevitable direction that a lot of these altcoins will go in. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. But anyway, that was my explanation on why Ethereum Classic got pwned. It's because of their 
uh, the miners being redirected to their chain. And there's just a lot more mining equipment and it's not that expensive to attack. So hope that helps you. And this song is done.